Hi everyone, welcome to the webinar this morning, uh, the EB5 Green Card Program. Uh, we are starting the webinar anytime soon, just to allow uh, a few seconds for everybody uh, to join the rooms. Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome again. And my name is Desmond from Global Migration Solution. So lately, Congress has passed a bill called the EB-5 Reform and Integrity Act of 2022. And this bill called for changes on the EB-5 visa programs. So for those who have heard about the EB-5 programs, so it is a green card options, essentially an immigration options to allow an investor to invest in United States through regional center into approved projects and create jobs for US workers. And based upon that, the investment and the job creation, you will get a green card for yourself, your spouse and your children's under 21 years old in just under the two years. So the changes that were made ultimately improve the entire EB-5 program and make it more compelling to the potential investor. So today we are going to go into some of the important points and changes that were made. So we have two speakers with us today. The first speaker, Michael Dai, who is a US immigration lawyer, and he's going to walk you through the EB-5 programs as the highlight today. Michael, would you like to say hi? Hi, thank you all for, uh, for attending today. I look forward to talking to you about the EB-5 program. Thanks, Michael. And also we have also with us the second speaker, Ming, the director of the investment from CanM, the regional center. So CanM is the most established regional center, handling more than half of the total application on the EB-5 so far. So they have successfully achieved 2 billion in EB-5 repayment. So Ming is going to share with you on how can M can assist you with the investment to meet the EB-5 requirement. And Ming, would you like to say hi? Yeah, absolutely. Hi, hi everybody. Thanks for the invitation from Global Migration. I look forward to share more information about can M and our current project information with you. Yes, so we are looking forward to have all this information and the latest update from you shortly, Ming. So if you have any question during the webinar, please type down your question in the chat room and we will attempt to answer all these questions at the end of the session. And just before we kickstart the programs, allow me to give a short introduction about the Global Migration Solutions. So this company has been around for the last 18 years and we focus on the right migration practices. We care a lot on the trust, the services and the commitment that we have for you as a client, for our business partners and our brand name. The, we have over the 18 years, the past 18 years, we have helped more than 12,000 family migrating successfully in terms of getting the green card, the PR on, onto the several countries. So other than the United States, we, we are also assisting clients on Portugal, Australia, New, New Zealand. So today we have office across five different countries from Australia, Singapore, Malaysia, Vietnam, and Hong Kong, 
to assist clients around the Asia countries. And this is about myself and my business partner, James Adam Hall, who is also a partner of the firm. Both of us, both of us are licensed immigration advisor with me 17 years and James 18 years. So thank you for the quick introductions I have for everybody. And I would like to, I would like to pass the floor over to you, Mike. Okay, great. Well, thank you uh, again, Desmond and, and Global Migration Solutions for arranging the event. I think you're doing this at a great time, uh, actually, because it's, uh, it's so new on the heels of the uh, new EB-5 law that went into effect. So it's a great time to go over the program again, kind of talk a little bit about uh, some of the changes that have happened, uh, but just go through step by step, what is EB-5 really? And how do you go through the program from a practical perspective? So I think, uh, I think we'll just jump into it uh, right now. Um, so, you know, normally when, when we give these types of overviews on EB-5, we like to put EB-5 into the context of the overall U.S. immigration system, just to let those who are listening and, and viewing the webinar to understand a little better how EB-5 fits into the whole landscape of U.S. immigration. And then we'll dive right into the details and show, uh, show you how, just how you make your way through the EB-5 program to get a green card. Mike, are you right. able to take control on the screen? Okay, yep, I think I, I, think I have it. All right, so, uh, so again, starting off uh, for the big picture, uh, look at the United States. When you look at EB-5, there are, of course, other countries that have citizenship or residency by investment programs out there. Uh, Desmond and his group at, at Global Migration Solutions, I'm sure, work with various programs. Um, but I'm going to tell you why the U.S. is the best. I'm biased. I'm sitting here in California, so I hope I hope you uh, you choose the United States. But just some of the reasons why our clients have selected uh, selected the United States. Um, for example, if you're looking to set up a business in the United States or to work in the United States, establish a life um, in the United States, you'll be able to take tap into a market of more than 325 million Americans. So that's a huge difference. If you're looking at moving to Australia, for example, well, the entire population of Australia can fit within Los Angeles County. So in terms of opportunities for your children or for yourself to start a business or to work, um, really the, the choices in the United States are endless. Um, also, probably the number one reason why most of our EB-5 clients choose the U.S., it has to do with the university system, those educational opportunities for their kids, um, some of the best universities and schools out there. And when you become a resident in the United States, you can take advantage of a significantly reduced tuition fee. Um, and so we can talk a little bit more about that later, but a lot of benefits with the United States that I don't think are out there with some of the other comparative programs that are out there. So that, that's a, a very, very quick overview of, of why some of our clients choose the US. Um, now, we always like to show this slide because I think, again, it, it kind of hits home on the United States and just how big it really is in terms of the economic size and the opportunity. So this map compares each state in the United States with the economy of a foreign country. So for example, if you would compare California, if it was its own country on its own, it would have an economy the size of India. And I think by the last uh, estimates that were put out from, from the United States, the economy uh, or the economic size of California is surpassed the UK's. So in terms of just the, the sheer magnitude of, of California as a state, just one example, Texas, the size of Brazil's economy, Florida, Indonesia. Uh, so wherever you decide to settle and live in the United States, really, again, the opportunities are endless. So I'm going to jump right now into the U.S. immigration system before we talk specifically about EB-5. I'm just going to go through very quickly here how someone gets 
permanent residency or a green card in the US. And that's done through generally one of only two ways, through family, through a close family member in the United States or through employment or investment. And we're gonna focus on the investment side today, which is EB-5. But I'm gonna talk very quickly here on some of the other categories that come from the employment-based side so you can see where EB-5 fits into the picture. And so when we talk about these categories, we go EB-1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And EB obviously stands for employment-based. And there are five categories. So EB-1, this is generally for people who are working for multinational managers or executives at companies abroad, and they're being transferred to companies in the United States. It's also for extraordinary ability individuals. So for an example, uh, we have a client who is here, very well-known chef from Shanghai, China, uh, decided to set up his own restaurant in the Los Angeles area. We brought him in under the EB-1 category. Just again, very brief overview on what that actually is. Uh, EB-2, this is for people who generally hold a master's level degree or higher, and it does require a job offer from a U.S. employer unless you're working in a field that's in the national interests of the United States. If that's the case, you can come over to the United States without a job offer. EB-3, this is for people who generally have a bachelor's level degree or higher. It does require a job offer from a U.S. employer. EB-4, a special type of category for religious professionals and also for translators and interpreters that have helped the US military in conflicts abroad, like Iraq, Afghanistan, things like that. Um, so that leads us to EB-5. So the topic for today, and this is the immigrant investor visa or technically known as the employment creation visa. And this visa has been around a very long time, actually. It started back in 1990. Um, and it started as a visa category intended to target investors who are going to set up their own businesses and companies in the US and create jobs. A few years went by and in 1993, the government kind of looked at this program in more detail and they saw that it wasn't being used that much. And that was primarily because it wasn't publicized at all. Uh, the government never marketed it like some of these other countries have done with their investor programs, and it wasn't being used. And so they developed what's called the Regional Center Program. And that basically is the most popular way to go through EB-5. And that involves you investing into what's known as a government-designated Regional Center Project in which you pool your money with many investors throughout the world to build generally what are known as large commercial or residential development projects, a large Hilton hotel, for example, or a Marriott, something like that. And you loan your money for a period of time, five, six, seven years, whatever it is that you've agreed to with that particular project. And at the end of that period, your money's returned to you and you have a green card. And we're gonna go through the specifics of actually going through the program here in a couple more slides. Uh, but that's generally how the regional center program works. And it's the, by far the easiest and most straightforward way to go through EB-5. You can still set up your own business in the U.S. if you'd like, the normal way that was initiated back in 1990. But very few people do that because there's a lot more, a lot more to it. And it's a lot, uh, a lot more of a hands-on approach to going through EB-5. But the regional center way is much more passive. And we'll talk a little bit more about that coming up. Um, a couple of the key requirements now, um, the investment that you're making into this business that you're going to invest in with the regional center project, it has to be responsible for creating 10 full-time jobs. And the investment levels as of now under the new law that was passed in mid-March of this year are a minimum of $800,000 into what's known as a targeted employment area. And these are areas generally that are rural or lesser populated areas or of high unemployment. And if you invest in your investment in one of those areas, you can do it at the lower amount of 800,000. If you don't do it in any of the targeted employment areas that are designated as such, 
the investment level now is 1.05 million. And that can be a project or your own business anywhere in the United States. So if you're wondering and you're listening to this program, well, are there any restrictions on who can actually apply for an EB-5 visa? No, there really aren't. Uh, we do, uh, the United States does accept uh, applications and petitions from any country in the world. Uh, we're gonna go through some of the very specific requirements to get through the program coming up here, but there are no restrictions, for example, for Iranian investors. Um, I know some of the other countries around the world, for example, may restrict Afghanistan or Iraq. Um, some of the other countries with um, difficult political situations at the current time. But as of now, the United States does not restrict any country. Um, it is available to pretty much everybody out there. Uh, it's a very popular program for those individuals who may want to spend longer periods of time in the United States and they don't want to deal with short-term visas to get in and out and watch their immigration status. Also for those kids or those university students, um, I'm a little bit older so I refer to them as kids, but, but they're not so much anymore. Uh, but but uh, those individuals studying in university and they've developed an affinity for living in the US, they don't really want to go back home. They want to try uh, and stay and build a life there and work in the United States, but they just haven't found a job offer. And so this is a great way for them to be able to stay in the United States um, and to continue their, their passion and their desire to, to find that employment and, and build a life there. So we're gonna go jump right into uh, a little bit more about the specifics of EB-5 now. So again, the advantages of the EB-5 visa, it is permanent residency. And that means that you can live and work anywhere in the United States. So if you make your investment into a Hyatt Hotel in Florida, you don't have to live there. You can live in California or New York or wherever you decide to. And those applicants living and working in the US can now file for work authorization and travel documents as they wait for their EB-5 petition to be approved. And this point right here is a brand new development under this new law that was passed in March of this year. That means that if you are inside the US studying, for example, on an F1 student visa, or you're finishing up your work, uh, temporary work job on some other type of visa, and you decide to submit your EB-5 petition and invest in one of these regional center projects, you can stay inside the US and wait for that petition to be adjudicated by the government. You don't have to leave and you can get work authorization to work anywhere in the United States and a travel permit to travel back and forth wherever you like as your petition is pending. Again, a brand new development. This was never offered before for EB-5. It was offered in some of the other categories, but for EB-5, it's brand new and it's a big benefit um, if you happen to be in the United States at the current time. Um, and again, I mentioned earlier, you, you get access to education at significantly reduced rates when you establish residency in the United States and in a particular state. And this can be a big benefit if you have one, two or three uh, children who are attending school or your spouse is going to school, it can uh, create a huge amount of savings. And one of the, uh, the other big benefits for this particular program is that EB-5 as a residency program can lead to US citizenship. Some of the other residency programs out there around the world, they stop at permanent residency. They don't allow you to proceed forward to get citizenship or a passport of that country. The US does, and you are generally able to file for US citizenship within five years of receiving your first step as a resident inside the United States. Um, and of course, citizenship does have its own requirements and, and that go into a bit more detail, but uh, the eligibility is there after you become a resident through EB-5. And I already hit some of these points before, so we won't talk too much about them, but for some of you that don't know, um, there are, is free access to education in the United States for 13 years. 
uh, free transportation to public schools. Again, I mentioned before, reduced in-state tuition at the university level. So a lot of educational benefits as you get residency in the US. Uh, a quick slide to show you the difference in tuition and fees between in-state and out-of-state. Um, it can actually save you more than half. Uh, so if you've got, again, two or three uh, kids going to school can uh, result in a huge savings over time. So how does the application process work from a practical perspective? Um, it works like this. EB-5 involves three stages or three phases. The first phase is you select a regional center that you're comfortable with that's been involved with EB-5 before that has a very good track record. Uh, you're comfortable with the project that they're offering and you decide to make an investment with them. You invest the funds with the EB-5 project and we as your law firm or whoever you hire to help you as an attorney, we file your EB-5 case with the government. And this is step one. This starts the EB-5 process. And after your EB-5 has been pending with the government and has had a chance to be reviewed, this usually, you know, you can expect an average of at least about 18 plus months to get your petition looked at. I know with this new law, uh, with this new law, the government, uh, was, uh, was intending to try to get the processing time down to six months. That's the goal. I think it's gonna take a bit of time to get there, um, but you should expect anywhere from 18 plus to 18 to 24 plus months, something like that for your petition to be looked at. Um, but again, they're really trying to get these processing times down. So I hope that's a goal that does uh, reach some success here coming up in the near term. Um, and once your case has been looked at and it's been approved, you will get an approval notice from the United States Citizenship and Immigration Service. That means your case goes to step two, and that's the immigrant visa interview at the U.S. Embassy or the consulate where you're residing. And for EB-5 applicants, it's generally very easy. Um, you know, we've had EB-5 investor clients go through in literally five minutes. Um, the government just wants to know you are who you say you are. You already go in there with an approval notice. So nothing's going to be adjudicated again with your case. Um, they just want to make sure that you haven't committed any criminal acts or anything like that since you filed your petition. And so uh, within a very short time, a uh, very quick interview, you're generally granted an approval. And within three to five days after the interview, you get your EB-5 visa stamped in your passport. And this means you have approximately four months to make that first trip to the US. And when you enter the first time with your EB-5 visa, you enter as a conditional permanent resident or a conditional green card holder. The green card itself comes in the mail about a month later. And what that means is that you just have one more piece of the EB-5 puzzle to fill. And that's step three. That's two years after you make that first entry to the US with your EB-5 visa, we have to file a second petition for you. And it's called an I-829 petition to remove those conditions from your green card and get you a permanent one. And we do that by showing the government that you left your investment with the regional center project, like you said you would do for that five, six, seven year period, whatever it was, and that 10 jobs were created based on that investment. And so once we've done that, we filed a petition. After that has been approved, you are a permanent resident. You can stay that way for life. Or as I mentioned earlier, you can proceed onward to US citizenship if you'd like. And you can do that from that five years after that first day you entered with your EB-5 visa. So again, three steps to get through EB-5, um, and it generally will take you uh, anywhere from four to five years or so to get through this process, if not a bit longer. Uh, depends on processing times, uh, but, um, but that is a very quick overview of the nuts and bolts of, of EB-5 from a legal perspective. Um, we're gonna talk, I think I have a couple slides here. Um, or maybe not. Oh, yeah, here we go. Um, 
on, on a couple of the key points as we prepare your case and we get your case through the system. Um, so you do have to know that according to the law, the money that you're investing, according to the government itself, must be, quote, at risk. And that means that a regional center project, they can't guarantee a return of your capital. But just because your money has to be at risk, it doesn't mean it has to be with a risky investment. And so the real way you really minimize this is going with a reputable, longstanding regional center that's been doing this for many, many years, has thousands of successful past cases. They've gone through multiple project cycles. They've returned money to previous investors. They really have a solid track record. If you do that, you can get through this program uh, with very, very minimal risk. Um, and I should mention the annual returns minimal. So when I mention that you loan money generally for a period of five to seven years to these uh, developers and, and projects so that they can build these, uh, these projects like hotels or whatever it is that you've chosen for your investment, the money that you're gonna get back as an annual return is going to be minimal. It may be anywhere from 0% to 0.5% to 1% or 2%, maybe a little bit higher. But the thing also to keep in mind is the higher the return is generally a little bit more of the higher the risk. And so that's why these regional center projects know, especially the good ones that have been around a very long time, that they don't really have to pay a high amount of return because they know their projects are good and they know they'll get a lot of investor clients. Um, and that's really your investment. It's getting your permanent residency and then getting your capital back. Um, so don't look at this as making a lot of money in the short term off the investment itself. Just think of it as the green card being your investment. Um, and that brings me to the last point here, lawful source of funds. This is the most important part about EB-5. We have to be able to show the U.S. government that the money you're using to invest was earned lawfully. And we've been doing this for many, many years with investors from all around the world with banking systems that are very different from the US, uh, from employment opportunities that they've had that are not traditional. Um, so we've seen pretty much almost every type of scenario you can think of. And we feel very confident that we can get nearly everyone through this program that can at least provide legitimate reasons for how they acquired their income. And then we'll work with you to develop the strategy that we that we need to get you through. And this may involve filing of, or the, the showing of tax returns if you live in a jurisdiction that files tax returns. Um, if not, uh, it would include employment certificates. Um, we'd look at bank statements to show salary payments, uh, things like that. So again, each case is specific to that individual and that investor, and we'll work with you to get you through that. Uh, what makes a strong EB-5 case really quickly here, just getting good information from you, the investor, good applicant and dependent information. An EB-5 investment case uh, covers the investor, the spouse, and dependent children under 21. So that means getting good passport information, birth certificates, marriage, divorce records. Um, you do actually have to get police clearances from any country that you lived in for a significant amount of time. Um, so this can take a little bit of time to get together, but we'll work with you, give you instructions for how to do that. Um, I talked about source of funds already, and then working with a good regional center to get that good documentation. And the good centers know how to give you that. Okay, uh, I think this is might be the, one of the last slides here, but um, I always get asked this at, at our seminars and, and, and webinars. Um, how much time do you need to spend in the United States to keep your green card? Really, the United States has a system that is, is unique. It's not like any other. There's no minimum amount of days. You have to be physically present to keep your residency. But I always recommend to clients at least try to enter the U.S. at least once every six months and don't be outside the U.S. for longer than a year. So if you can make quarterly visits, that's even better. Um, but definitely try to come at least once every six months. If you know you're going to be gone for a long period of time, 
we can apply for what's called a re-entry permit for you. And that's advanced permission for you to be gone from the US for up to two years at a time. We just have to know in advance to do that. So are things, there are things that we can do to help you if, if you know you're gonna be gone for a while. Um, so I think I've used up my time here. I'm gonna hand it over uh, back to you, Desmond, and uh, look forward to hearing from, from any questions anytime. Thank you so much, Mike, for the introduction and the, and the clear explanation on the programs. And uh, without further ado, we pass the floor over to Ming. And Ming, uh, the control is on, on you. Oh, okay. Uh, let me share my screen really quick. Mike, that is such a great overview of the program. Um, it's even a great refresh for me as well, since we just passed a new legislation and everybody is kind of relearning the program a little bit. Oh, come on, man, you're an expert at this. <laughs> uh, can you guys see my screen? Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay, great. Great, um, so Mike just spent um, a solid uh, 25 minutes, give us a great detailed overview of the EB-5 immigration program. So can -M, we are the regional center component um, of the program. So um, as the leading uh, regional center operator, can -M has more than 20 years experience um, in sponsoring and managing EB-5 projects. So we are actually well knowing among our investors for our very conservative approach in project selections and investor first in our customer service. Uh, so CanAm established our first regional center in 2001 after being a successful operator of the Canadian Business Immigration Program. Uh, so our name carries kind of CanAm's legacy um, in both programs. So we are headquartered in New York, um, and we have offices in China, Singapore, um, and India. So since 2001, CanAm has raised more than 3 billion EB-5 capital for over 60 EB-5 projects. We have also repaid over 2 billion EB-5 capital uh, to our investors who have successfully completed their immigration. So this is actually a, a old team photo of ours because the pandemic, we haven't been able to kind of gather together back in our New York headquarter. Uh, and we look forward to do that and update the photo uh, by end of this year. So uh, CanAm holds seven regional center designations from USCIS. Um, this means that we can sponsor and operate EB-5 project in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, California, New York, Florida, Hawaii, and Texas, all our regional centers project are managed by our team based in New York. CanAm's new EB-5 project is currently sponsored under our Texas regional center. Um, since, since 2001, since we established our first regional center, uh, CanAm has committed has been committed to bring the highest quality EB-5 project to help our investors secure their U.S. immigration. Um, our stellar track record reflects the success of CanAm's approach and our value. More than fifteen thousand conditional green card has already been issued to CanAm investors globally, and more than 7,800 permanent green card have already been awarded to CanAm investor. What really set CanAm apart from our competitors are our capital repayment record. As of end of 2021, uh, CanAm has achieved the milestone of more than 2 billion of EB-5 capital repaid to 4,000 investor families globally who have completed their immigration process. Um, our success formula is based on the investor first philosophy everywhere, every single CanAm employee holds. Um, we conduct very extensive due diligence on every single project that CanAm choose to sponsor and offer to our global EV5 investor community. Uh, we also you know, carry out comprehensive project monitoring and reporting through the project's life cycle and our higher standard for only work with the most accredited borrowers um, that we can find in the investment market.
these are some of the, the happy moments at CanAm's uh, repayment parties. So um, CanAm, even during the, the pandemic in the past two years, we actually have six projects that successfully repaid the EB-5 loan back to our investors. We couldn't host any celebrations in the past two years, you know, obviously because of COVID, uh, but we look forward to bringing back these repayment parties this year. Well, we actually have a pretty big uh, project that will repay in July. Um, so we're definitely um, look forward to sharing the, these happy news with our investors soon. So one question uh, we get asked frequently um, is from our investor is that, you know, it's great that you share with me your track record and your repayment, but how do we know that this track record is real? So to bring more transparency and trust, um, CanAm has engaged the accounting firm PKF to audit our track record every year. The team from PKF verify all the USCIS approval notices CanAm receive, as well as bank wire transfer record for repayment. Based on the finding, they prepare this auditor report for us to share with our partners and investors. So if any, any of you are interested in to kind of read through the full report, we're happy to share that with you. Um, CanAm's network of project partners are the key to the quality of our EB-5 project. We have the pleasure to work with some of the most prestigious developers, uh, such as Tishman Spile um, and Fortune 500 companies, such as you know, Time Warner and uh, Comcast. Um, EB-5 capital are used for building company headquarters, um, updating key infrastructures such as the city's electricity grid and even making movies. So in 2013, um, CanAm actually worked with Sony Studio to use EB-5 Capital for movie production. Um, some of the movies you might have seen are like Spider-Man 2, Big Bang Theories, um, are you know, the, the famous show, shows that EB-5 Capital um, is used for. So the project, uh, the, the Sony studio project was successfully repaid in 2017. And to this day, we still have investors come over to us and ask if we have more movie EB-5 project they can invest it in. Um, with the reauthorization um, of the uh, EB-5 program, we are very excited to launch our 62 EB-5 project, the Jefferson Terminal Phase 2 project. So we will raise 28 million EV5 capital to fund the Jefferson Energy Terminals expansion to support um, its key refinery customers, ExxonMobil. The investment amount uh, to, for the project, um, it, because the project is located in a TEA, a target employment area. So the investment amount will be 800K and we will only have 35 spots available in the project for our investor globally. I uh, just wanna give you a quick introduction of the Jefferson Terminal uh, project and why we are doing currently doing the phase two expansion. So in July, um, so Jefferson Terminal itself is an oil project logistic terminal located in Belmont, Texas. It provides uh, strategic storage and transportation services to major oil companies in the region. In July, 2021, Jefferson entered into a new 10-year service agreement to expand terminal services to ExxonMobil um, oil company, which is um, a wholly owned subsidiaries of ExxonMobil Corporation. Uh, they're public listed in New York Stock Exchange. The phase two expansion project will build additional pipelines and storage services between Jefferson Terminal and ExxonMobil's uh, Belmont Refinery Facility. The project construction has already started with government uh, bond financing in place. So um, CanAm actually previously funded, um, you know, a, a tranche one EB-5 loan for the Jefferson phase one expansion, which was completed in early 2021. The Jefferson Phase One project has also received uh, USCIS I-924 approval previously. 
So um, the Jefferson Terminal itself is a very critical link um, of the energy supply chain. Um, I really like this chart because it's clearly kind of uh, illustrate Jefferson's role um, in the supply chain. So if you look at the left side, um, you know, the crude oil, uh, these crude oil from oil producers are first transported to Jefferson Terminal through different transportation method. The crude oil will be stored and blended at Jefferson's facility until uh, the large refineries are ready to manufacture these oil products. The crude oil will flow from Jefferson's um, storage tank to ExxonMobil's refining facilities through pipelines and be manufactured there into different types of oil product that we use every day. Once the products are ready, it will then again flow back to Jefferson's facility and be transported to different parts of the US and Mexico. Jefferson Terminal currently has a long-term contract to provide this logistics service to some of the biggest energy companies in the world, such as you know, ExxonMobil, uh, Saudi Armco's Motiva, and French uh, largest energy company, Total. Um, so the reason you know, so many large refineries chose to use Jefferson's service um, is because um, you know, the Jefferson's location. So here you can see that Jefferson Terminal's location is really one of its key um, advantage, uh, competitive advantage. The terminal is strategically located in the heart of the Gulf Coast. Um, all the largest crude oil and petrol uh, product market in the US um, so Jefferson Terminal is located across a narrow canal from Axon's refining facility. And once the phase two expansion is completed, there will be seven pipelines running under the water connecting the two facilities, making Jefferson the, the most preferred logistics service provider for Axon Mobil. You know, in my earlier slide, I mentioned that the key to uh, CanAm's success and CanAm's EB5 uh, project is our, our project partners. So we really only work with the best in different industries. So the borrower of the Jefferson Terminal project is a subsidiary of CanAm's long-term project partner, Fortress Investment Group. Uh, Fortress is one of the largest um, investment companies in the US. And this subsidiary, the Fortress Transportation and Infrastructure Investor, um, is also a public listed investment company um, on the New York Exchange. And their ticker is FTI. So um, CanAm has collaborated with Fortress and is affiliated previously um, three times already. And we, we raised over $500 million for this three different project. The first EB-5 project we worked together with Fortress was repaid in August 2020. Um, it's, a, it's a 350, 350 million EB-5 repayment. And I believe it's the single largest EB-5 capital repayment um, in history. The second Canam Fortress EB-5 project uh, will mature this year in July. Um, and we anticipate the second EB-5 loan to also be repaid in full and on time. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, with the uh, COVID finally been under control in most part of the world, we're looking forward to uh, host some celebration parties for this large repayment um, in, in Asia and also in, in the US. So there is something very unique um, about the Jefferson Terminal project. So the terminal itself was formed as a public-private partnership between local government, which is a Portobello Navigation District, and the Jefferson Energy Company in 2012. So Fortress acquired the entire terminal um, in 2014. Um, under the partnership, the local government, Port Obama, has provided uh, both policy and financial support to Jefferson Terminal's operation and expansion. Jefferson phase two expansion, the total budget uh, for the expansion uh, will be $230 million. Um, and you can see here that the capital will be used 
to build new storage tanks, pipelines, and updating the pipeline control system. These $230 million are what we call the qualified spending that will be documented to prove the EV-5 job creation for investors' permanent green card partition. Um, as Mike mentioned before, that is the second petition, which is called the IA29 petition. So CanAm, as a regional center operator, will be documenting all the spendings from this project and provide these document, uh, documents to your immigration lawyer as your IA29 petition to secure your permanent green card. So to support the, the expansion, the local government, Port of um, has already issued uh, 200 million, a little bit more than 200 million of municipal bonds. These are local US local government bonds uh, to fund the Jefferson phase two expansion in August last year. Um, and the, these $200 million um, has already been secured and been funded into the Jefferson terminal expansion project. Uh, hence the construction has started in August last year. Um, and the rest of the, the funding, which uh, will be coming from the small phase two EB-5 loan will only be $28 million. So uh, we, we do, since the construction has been ongoing since August last year, we do have a lot of documents to show that significant numbers of EB-5 qualified jobs has already been created for this project. So for the small EB-5 loan we're providing to Jefferson, um, our investors' capital is secured by FTI's almost $850 million of equity investment in the project, uh, which is you know, about 54% of the company's total capitalization. So this EV-5 investment will be a five-year loan with two one-year extension option um, at FTI's election. That's at the borrower's choice. Since the interest rate for EV-5 loan, will, we will increase the interest rate for the EV-5 loan a little bit by 0.5% during any loan extension. Um, the borrower is normally discouraged from using the option. So, um, you know, this is why, um, you know, because this large equity investment um, as a collateral for our EV-5 capital, um, that's why we feel the, our investments, our EV-5 invest, investors capital is relatively uh, secured. Um, even though we still meet this so-called at risk requirement, we always make sure that our borrower has enough skin in the game and their investment in terms of repayment priorities is behind our EB-5 investors. So um, we anticipate the um, Jefferson Terminal phase two project to create um, more than 1,990 qualified EB-5 jobs uh, for our 35 investors in the project uh, because each investor will be allocated around 50 jobs. And the legislation, the EB-5 program only requires 10 jobs per investor. So we feel very, very comfortable about the large job cushions um, in the project. So after sharing all these information about the Jefferson Terminal project, um, I just like to quickly summarize what we have discussed and why can chose this project to offer to our investor. So um, Jefferson Terminal is a high quality energy infrastructure project. We believe that the value of Jefferson Terminal's asset will be very resistant to any economic downturn and kind of provide uh, inflation protection under the current economic environment. Um, this terminal is strategically located in the oil industry center of the US and provide superior kind of connection and transportation flexibilities to its large customers, which are mostly you know, global oil refineries. The, the terminal has very consistent policy and financial support from local government. Um, it has also secured multiple, you know, um, more than 10 years contract with some of the largest energy companies in the world. Um, and these contracts provide a stable revenue and cash flow for the terminal's operation. Jefferson's most important clients, ExxonMobil here, um, it, 
ExxonMobil actually have further plan to invest up to $20 billion in the US Gulf Coast, making Belmont refinery the largest refinery in North America. So um, as I mentioned and highlighted earlier, EB-5 loan is secured by FTI's large equity investment in the Jefferson Terminal. As one of the most experienced EB-5 regional operator, regional center operator in the industry, Canem is very confident in the project's quality and security in both immigration and as an investment. Um, this concludes my presentation today. Um, I guess I'll pass it back to Desmond and we can do um, a bit of Q&A. Sure. So thanks, Ming, uh, for the solid uh, facts sharings on Canem and also the introduction of the Jefferson Terminal projects. It is really assuring, you know, and what you have shared. And when Cameron mentioned about investor first, that's really, we see that from that whole team and Cameron. So that gives us a lot of comforts and confidence, especially to the investor. Now, uh, let me bring back my slide. So that, uh, how, how can you contact us? So basically we have the contact detail here. You can email us or you can just contact us, ring up the office or contact us over the WhatsApp. I, all the contacts are here. And uh, so we hope that today uh, the programs, you get all the quality information about the programs uh, from Mike and me and uh, Let's see if there's any question uh, from the floor. I can't see it from my side here as I'm sharing the screen. Uh, I just need to find out from my team. Audrey? So far, all good? So far, all good? Okay. So uh, we thank you all for joining us. Uh, today and thanks again Mai and thanks again Ming uh, for your time and uh, we really look forward to assist you uh, for your future for your plans in terms of getting the green card uh, to, to the United States and thanks again and have a good day everyone and see you again soon bye-bye thank you Desmond bye thanks bye-bye Mai thanks Yep, thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs>